Hey, everybody, and welcome to another Playful Humans podcast. I'm your host, Mike Montague, and my guest this week is the owner of a dog clothing brand, an entrepreneur. Uh, he's working on a book, and he's been on television shows. It's Kentucky Gallahue with Derby. Uh, so we got Kentucky and Derby here with us today. Uh, Derby, I think, no no offense, uh, Kentucky, slightly more famous uh, uh, than you, man, right? Yeah, I'm just the guy that feeds him. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Check him out at derbycalifornia.com. Check out Playful Humans at playfulhumans.com. And make sure you subscribe to this podcast on YouTube, iTunes, all that good stuff. Let's go. Here we go. I should probably start, and I mentioned it sooner, that uh, if you're listening to the audio version of this, you might want to check out the video on YouTube this time, because uh, we have uh, Derby, who is a golden doodle, is that right? Correct. Uh, he is on camera today, but he probably won't speak too much for the podcast listeners, so... Uh, yeah, go check out the video version. But great to have you here, Kentucky. And uh, we like to start with the joke of the week. So before we get too far, here's the joke of the week. It's brought to you by Diet Coke. Diet Coke making people feel better about ordering two Big Macs and a large fry since 1982. Oh, yeah. Try Diet Coke today. So here is my San Diego dog joke. Um, how are a dog and a marine biologist alike? How is a dog and a marine biologist alike? Hmm. Has to be something about water, but you got us. I don't know. <laughs> One wags a tail and the other tags a whale. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah, we see some whales every once in a while out in the ocean around here. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Uh, so I met you uh, doing an Instagram video in the park on, on Shelter Island in San Diego, which is awesome. And uh, you were picking winners for the Kentucky Derby. So it's past. Everybody missed out on Derby's prediction there, but uh, got second place winner, right? Was that yeah, the, the winner, uh, the, the horse he picked, uh, I don't remember the name, but came almost came in first by and lost by a nose at the Derby, <laughs> but came in second. <laughs> that is, uh, that's so awesome and so much fun. So a good follow on Instagram, go check out Derby California and the website too. If you like the, uh, the tie-dyed dog hoodies, mm -hmm. that is where you can get those. I don't know of any other place you can get them. So uh, yeah, check out Derby California. Yeah, our tie-dye hoodies, we're all about the matchy-matchy. Uh, if you ever see us for, uh, on the here or on real life, we actually have uh, mohawks together. We wear sunglasses, and we have hoodies where you can match with you and your dog. Tie-dye here made in OB San Diego. <laughs> that is uh, so awesome, and you're having a ton of fun. So we got a lot to talk about here in the next, you know, 25 minutes or so is um, – You've been on the pack on Amazon where you did kind of a amazing race style competition with Derby and you guys did very well. We won't give away any spoilers because you can watch all 10 episodes on Amazon prime right now. Just go check out all 10, but without the spoiler, I, th I think the best in is what you gave me, which is Kentucky and Derby are in every episode. That's so correct. Let's give away any spoilers. You'll see a lot of them on that <laughs> show. Yes. And uh, and then you're on a, a new Netflix show, too, as well. And that one is uh, Pet Stars. Mm -hmm. You Pet guys Stars. did a little surfing, and Derby goes surfing with you on the surfboard. Yeah, Derby and I surf in dog competitions up and down the California coast. And it's just something we picked up five years ago when we first moved here to California or San Diego. So, you know, some people saw us. Uh, they were doing a show and asked to be in it. And uh, it just came out this past week. It's called Pet Stars on Netflix. <laughs> That's so awesome. You're, uh, you're crushing it, having a lot of fun. So let's talk about the beginning of, of this. Yeah. Did you ever have a real job? How did you and Derby uh, find each other? And when did it turn into a thing? Oh, man, it's a great story. So yeah, I've actually got a degree in construction management. I've been doing construction most of my life. Uh, when, I, when I was living in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, five years ago, I, I, that's where I got Derby. Uh, I was doing building bars and restaurants and working at bars and restaurants with my friends from college. So really living it up, living the nightlife. Uh, Derby's nine years old. I got him. He's a nine-year-old golden doodle. I got him when he's about a year and a couple of months. 
from a loving family that just didn't have time for him. And they realized that. And they knew about me through a friend that uh, I you know I love hanging out with my dogs uh, that I've always had. And uh, they gave him to me. And I've been taking him on adventures ever since. It's so cool that the family and the grandparents still follow our adventures on Instagram and always message me like, man, he's living the best life ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. They got to be pretty pumped about that. And it sounds like it worked out well for everybody. That's so great. Now, I, I mean, you mentioned taking them on adventures. It sounds like you're a pretty adventurous guy on your own. But w when did you first realize that he wanted to play a part in, in that and do different things? So when I first got Derby, like I said, he was very skittish. He knew like his backyard and his kennel. And that's all that he ever knew in the family. So I lived in midtown Atlanta. So I took him down to the, to the big city and he was very skittish. He wouldn't walk up to people. He wouldn't be doing this right now. He was very just like, don't know what it is in the world. And I kind of looked at him and said, man, I'm going to introduce you to everything. And just mm -hmm. by taking him out every day, letting him meet new people, taking him to the bars I worked at, his confidence grew. And that's when I knew, was like, man, he's down for anything. So that's when we started going to baseball games, uh, camping, uh, going to the parks, meeting other dogs, and just just meeting the world. And every time we went, he, I could tell that his confidence level built, but he, if, as long as I was there, he was down for anything. Uh, actually, he didn't even love water when I first met him. And so I went to a friend's pool, and then he was like, well, if you're in it, I can get in it. And now I can't keep him out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, because it doesn't sound like you have a ton of dog training expertise. Is, is this all self-taught and I, on the pack? You have to do a lot of crazy challenges. How was all that? So I've had dogs all my life. Growing up on a farm in Kentucky, we've always had dogs. They were always those free dogs that you get in the newspaper. Uh, mm -hmm. And they were farm dogs. They were dogs that just lived outside. They were there to scare off critters and let you know somebody was coming up the driveway. But I always loved going on adventures with them and teaching them little tricks here and there, just kind of just learning. Uh, when I had a, my next dog after when I went to college, I had a great Dane, and that dog followed me everywhere. He sat in the back of my truck while I was bartending in bars and nightclubs. I mean, he was just so lovable. So I kind of understood how dogs act and how to train them to do the basic stuff, but getting them to do, you know, crazier things like surfing and everything that took some just training on my own and doing some research. Uh, being on the yeah. pack was amazing. They had such awesome trainers that everybody always asked, did the trainers train your dogs to do all that stuff on the pack? And I'm like, no, the trainers trained us to train our dogs. So they were so much help. Derby learned a lot of new tricks that I never even thought he'd ever learn. And it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's so awesome and a really cool experience. So I, I wanted to ask you, it sounds very playful. That's the title of this podcast is Playful Human. So I, I'm being self-centered here, but um, it sounds like play and having fun is a big part of, of your life, but also how you guys connect and, and how he learns to do all these tricks, that it's not work for Derby to do any of this stuff, right? Is, is it work for you at all? And, and when is that? No, if it's work, I'm not doing it. <laughs> no, it's all about having fun, uh, spreading smiles on everyone's faces. What it's, it's what it's really all about. And Derby loves doing it. Uh, I mean, if, like I say, people always ask me, like, how do you know he doesn't like to do it? And I'm like, well, if he doesn't want to do it, we don't do it. <laughs> I, like, I don't yeah. force him to do anything he doesn't want to do. Uh, and so it's all about just having that bond with your dog and knowing, you know, what does he really want to do or does he not want to do? But most of the time, it's let's just have fun and just go out there and spread smiles on everyone's faces. <laughs> so I'd love to hear some advice for you. Let's start with the kids. I'm sure there are a bunch of like kids or young adults who would love to do something like this, play with their dog on Instagram and yeah. take them to cool places, travel the world with them and, and do all the cool stuff that you're doing. What advice would you have for somebody that kind of wants to get into your lifestyle there, especially at a young age? Uh, it's all about just having fun with your dog. I mean, you know, there's got to be some limits that you got to set because, you know, some, I've, I've always, people always ask, how do you get your dog to do that? I'm like, well, they're, you know, we're best friends, we're pals, but I always tell people, I'm still the alpha. <laughs> Not saying that, like, you know, we're, you know, I'm forcing him to do anything, but, you know, sometimes your dog needs to understand, like, you're the one in charge. And I see that a lot with people who have dogs, especially doodles. They think they're fun and cuddly, but they just don't have boundaries. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, when Derby was given to me, uh, they told me that he ate a dress, that he pulled a turkey off the uh, counter, 
And I was just like, yeah, it just sounds like he just didn't have any boundaries. But once a dog establishes that, like, hey, you're the one in charge, whatever you're down to do, I'm down to do too. And it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that that makes a lot of sense. And then what about the career part? I mean, you're not leaving, living in a cheap city there in, in San no. Diego. So was it uh, scary, like leaving the construction stuff or did it just kind of happen and gradually build up? How was that transition for you from, you know, kind of a, a you know, day job to one that is just, you know, fun and, and games? Yeah. So the show definitely gave us a huge platform to start this. Uh, we were kind of just did it on Instagram just to show all the crazy stuff we did. I was never really in it for the money. Uh, I'm still really not in it for the money, but I always wanted to show what we did, all the fun stuff we did, and all the stuff we did to help other uh, uh, organizations uh, or uh, that needed help you know, or spread of word uh, for a good cause, mostly dog uh, and pet causes. So that's what we were all about. Once we got on the show, we realized our reach went out a lot further, like worldwide. And we're, I said, man, we could really touch a lot of lives doing this and make a little money to keep doing this. We're not trying to be right. millionaires. We're just trying to be able to keep doing this and keep I, so I can hang out with my dog every day. <laughs> well, I love that because I think that's something we haven't talked about on the podcast before, but is really kind of rang true for me is that not everything has to scale. Not everything has to be millions of dollars and a, a global brand. Like if you get to make enough money to keep doing it, like that to me is good enough, right? If you get to exactly. keep having fun with your dog surfing, making cool products, writing children's books and, and enjoying your life, you only need enough money to keep doing that. You don't need to, you know, have some sort of big, massive, you know, Fortune 500 company that's publicly traded and stuff, right? No, and I totally agree. And I see a lot of these influencers out there who do make these videos and the kids see them, they're like, oh, now, you know, they're, they're just balling out. And I get it. People want to strive for that because like, hey, all I do is make videos all day and I get paid for it. Totally agree. But like with me and Derby, we're just about showing our bond and just how much fun you can have with your dog. And being on the pack gave us that platform to kind of reach out further, like I said. And just and another thing is like with Golden Doodles, most people think Golden Doodles are just uh, hyperallergenic dogs that don't shed. And they're, uh, what do you call it, designer dogs that cost a lot of money. And they do cost a lot of money, which is crazy mm -hmm. to me too. But they have so much more potential. Uh, and that's what one big reason to be on the show, I was, I was so happy to show the world that doodles are smart and are, can be so much fun and can be outdoor athletic dogs at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, that's so awesome. And I, and I think totally worthwhile. What's the, what was the most fun you think you two have had together? What was the one that really clicked? Was it Surfing, something on the race, or, or what? What is it for you? Surfing's definitely changed our lives. I mean, I moved out here to San Diego five year, years ago. I was at a low point in my life, and you know, I, I was doing bartending for 20 years. And I'm going to be honest, when, you, when you're in the nightlife, drugs and alcohol seem to take effect. And I knew I needed to get out of there. And I tell these people today, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be here today. So moving out to San Diego, we packed up my truck. If it didn't fit on my truck, it didn't go. <laughs> Three days across the country. I'm going to be honest, there were some times I was doubting what we were doing just to start over at my age. And uh, my sister was here and gave me an opportunity to start over. And I didn't know what we were going to do out here. I thought I was going to sell. I told everybody I'd sell carved coconuts at the beach. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But we started <laughs> surfing. I wanted to learn how to surf. First thing you do in San Diego is you buy your first uh, beginner surfboard. There's an awesome beach here in Ocean Beach that's called Do o OB Dog Beach. If you ever come to San Diego, check it out. Just watching dogs run without a leash on the beach is amazing and so therapeutic. <laughs> so I we went to the beach. I figured Derby was going to play with the other dogs while I was learning to surf. He kept following me out there. And I was like, no, dude, go back to the beach. Well, finally, he's up to the point where he's swimming at me. I put him on the board. He stands on the board. I push him into one wave. He rides it all the way to the beach. I was like, he kind of turns around and says, uh, is this what you're trying to do? Because this seems pretty easy. I was happy and mad at the same time because he just learned how to surf before I did. <laughs> Through that, we kept just playing around with it. Some dude came up to us and said, hey, man, you know they got competitions for that. And I was like, really? He said, yeah, there's one in Imperial that's been doing it for 20 years. You should look into it. So I looked into it, kind of saw some videos. And I was like, oh, it's dog surfing competitions. 
I have never myself before then been to a human surf competition or any kind of surf competition. So we signed up, showed up. I didn't know what I was doing. I watched everybody else kind of kept to ourselves. We had our mohawks and our, our sunglasses already time, but uh, I just kind of watched. Derby did so well. He did, he placed like fifth or sixth out of 30 dogs. And what I tell everybody, these competitions, we don't win any money. It's all about for a good cause or a good organization and just to spread awareness for some cause. But all the other dog surfing parents came up to us. It's like, dude, where did y'all come from? Like, how long y'all been doing this? I'm like, man, we've been doing this for like six weeks. We, we don't really know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Through that, you know, we've been doing it for five years now. We do four events up and down the coast, all the way from Imperial up to San Francisco. It's been an awesome experience meeting all these new people and just – enjoy be almost becoming part of Southern California and uh the seeing people's faces light up when they see Derby and all the other dogs surf is just all worth well, well worth it yeah that's that's so awesome and I, I really think that's a great way to to put it too but I, I caught something in there that I wanted to ask you about which is you kind of just went on YouTube and learned it and I think you kind of mentioned that with the the training stuff too how big a part does you know being a lifelong learner and and trying stuff that you might not be good at play I, I, into to what you're doing i mean it's just crazy the times we're living in now if you want to learn something you just google it <laughs> and it's out there and that's so awesome it's so amazing that you know information is shared so much throughout the world uh you know the world's becoming a smaller place but, but then again information is out there for everyone to, ha to share and enjoy and yeah, that's when people will say, hey, how do I train my dog to do this? I'm like, I can tell you, but there's going to be other people who are very well uh, trained or more informative that can tell you more about it on, on, the, on the web. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I think that that's so cool. Do you worry about failure at all? Does it play into what you're doing? I mean, or is it just part of, of what happens when you're doing things that you, you know, are new to? You know, it's one of those things with that, it's not much, it's just kind of just hanging out. You know, if we do good, we do good. There's been other things we've tried. People have always tried to say, hey, you should do disc uh, dog. You should do dock jumping. And we've tried it all. And like uh, dock jumping, he does it. He's just not very good at it. I'm like, okay, cool. You're not good at it, but you can do it. We've tried it. We might do it again, but it's for fun. But as for comp competition, yeah, it's not our thing. Uh, disc dog, Derby actually will catch a Frisbee with his mouth and loves to play fetch. But us doing it in competition, yeah, it's not our thing, but we tried it. And that's what I'm all about. Any kind of thing we can do just to try it, just to see what happens, we're all about it. I tell people, always people are always like, oh, is he a champion dog surfer? It's like, man, we go out there and have fun. If we win, we win. We lose, we lose. We're not always the winner. We're not always the losers. But you know what? We're always the ones that put smiles on people's faces. <laughs> that's so awesome. I mean, I got to think that that's hard, especially in big competitions and, and things that are, are televised. Uh, again, you know, not too many spoiler alerts. If you really care, you might pause. But uh, but does that come on? I mean, you as a human, I would imagine, care a lot more than Derby does. He's probably having fun in all of them. But uh, are you still able to to separate that and just say, man, we had a, a great time? Or when you come, you know, uh, yeah, you know, not, I mean, in, not in first, does that still? Uh, you know what? Above? The only thing is, even on the show, I kind of had the same mentality and I sh probably should have been more competitive, but like, that's just not me. And even my friends back home, when they watch shows like, yeah, that's, that's Kentucky. That's, he's just laid back. It really, I'm, I'm, it, if it happens, it happens. It is, it is, it is whatever. And, you know, there's times that you actually try and, you know, you want to be a part of it. I'm not saying like, don't try, but I'm just more of a go with the flow. Uh, like during major competitions on the show, We'd be in tense, tense running, and they're like trying to figure it out. And as I told the producers and the directors and everybody, I'm like, look, when the camera's on us, we're we're and we're ready to be on camera and, and do the challenge, we'll be your dancing monkey. We're like, we're ready to like perform. We're there to for a job. We're you know, we're there to have fun also. But when the camera's not on us, we'll be in the back taking a nap. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's like, I'm not, there's no reason to get stressed out about it if you can't have nothing to do with it. Like, it's out of your hands. You're kind of like, well, we're going to go chill out in the back. There's plenty of times when I'd be out in his pen, just me and him just taking a nap. And you're like, all right, five more minutes till you're ready. I'm like, all right, wake me up in four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, so and, awesome, man. Yeah. And a great attitude to have because I, I think you're right. That's where it really becomes uh, play instead of work. But it, it also just, 
you get to enjoy the process and it makes such a big difference on the results. If you're only waiting until the finish line to figure out whether you had fun or not, you're doing it wrong. You're missing right? out on the big picture and just what's going on around you. Like, you know, and that happened to a couple of contestants on the show. They were kind of like, oh, I got to win. I got to win. And I, I kind of told them like, dude, I'm, I love your enthusiasm. I love your competitive. I was like, but look around you, like take a, take a minute to just see what you're about. You know, you're missing out on, on bonding with these other contestants, which we, that's so awesome about the show that we're all really good friends now and still talk to each other on a regular basis and help each other out with projects. So, you know, coming out of the show, that's what I tell people I got out of it the most was just to be able to travel the world and get and have new friends. <laughs> yeah. So amazing. Is there anything left on your fun bucket list? Is there anything you want to try either by yourself or with Derby that you haven't done uh, yet? I tell people if I have a chance of dying, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll try it. I love it. I still need to bungee jump, but I want to bungee jump off a beautiful bridge or something like that. Not from a crane at fairgrounds. So that's something I really want to do. I've done the skydiving. I've had motorcycles. I've done four wheelers, you no know, whitewater rafting, things that you know, might kill me. Things with Derby, my goal is to drive as many forms of transportation with him. I can. We have <laughs> been on, what are we, we've done canoes, boats, jet skis, uh, bicycles, motorcycles. We actually have a motorcycle sidecar that we ride around town in, uh, scooters, uh, helicopters, planes, trains, uh, uh, gondolas. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if somebody has a, out there has an, a, an elephant, I, we definitely want to ride an elephant. <laughs> That's so awesome. Uh, I think that is great. And I love that, that kind of uh, attitude too. I found like when you're trying to pursue things, it helps to kind of pick a lane, like, right? If you want to do everything, that doesn't work. But if you go, I want to do as many modes of transportation as possible, it yeah. narrows your focus, but still allows you the kind of flexibility to be creative and go deep on something rather than a really shallow experience at a whole bunch of different things. So I, I think that's a great attitude too. True. And if anybody out there next winter, we need to ride a snowmobile. bill. <laughs> There you go. That's so, uh, that's so great. And we'll help you out for sure. If we can, I'm trying to think of something, uh, something fun around here, but I don't know that I have anything uh, <laughs> good. I'll, I'll have to I mean, think We've been on that. tractors before, <laughs> big tractors. So that's, a, I know there's a lot of that in Kansas. <laughs> we do have some of those for sure. <laughs> All right. Um, we like to wrap up by playing a game here, but as I mentioned, you can't force anybody to have fun. So you get the question, would you like to play a game or would you like to walk away? Let's play the game. <laughs> All right. We are spinning the wheel O games. There's 10 games on there and one will pop up. You got survey says survey, survey says, says. Is, is pretty easy. All you have to do is uh, just like the famous television show, get one of the top five answers on the board. We asked a hundred people to name a place. You should never stick your finger. What did mm. they say? Name a place. You should never stick your finger. Uh, definitely in a saw of some sort, I guess. Would that would be one? Ooh, not on there. No, sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, it should ooh. be power tools. Ask any. It should be like, yeah, power tools teacher. and stuff like that. All right. So where should we not put our fingers, bro? <laughs> There's a lot of places, but I don't know if we're, this is uh, R-rated. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Oh, man, uh, that's a tough one, actually. Uh, stick our fingers. Hmm. We definitely don't want to put our fingers... In our noses. <laughs> there you go. Nose is the number two answer. Nicely yeah, done. No, definitely don't want to put them there, even though we probably do. Fan and garbage disposal also on the list. Um, fire is, is kind of obvious, but not Oh, great. yeah. The stove or number something. Number one answer, though, is light socket. Light uh, socket. I never even thought, yeah, I should know that. Being in construction, I should know that. I've been shocked a hundred times. <laughs> All right. Name a place where you always try to squeeze in one more person. Ooh, subways. <laughs> There you go. You got it. Yeah. Public transportation. Uh, they're like the top three on this list here. Uh, good. So last one, this is for you and Derby name a public place where you wish people wouldn't take their dogs. Ooh, a public place. You know what? I'm going to be honest. I hope, I wish you could take your dog anywhere. <laughs> so I'm a little biased on that. I don't know if there would be a place I wouldn't want to take my dog. <laughs> yeah, but where do you think other people maybe wouldn't, <sighs> wouldn't want you to? Should not take your dogs to... Where you get the most dirty looks, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, the funny thing is, in San Diego, you can about take your dog anywhere, and people are like, it's a normal thing. 
but where should you not go? I mean, probably should not go to the grocery stores, but uh. <laughs> store and market is on the list. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? They actually let us in a lot of the grocery stores here in San Diego. <laughs> restaurant was number two. Restaurant, I think, is probably a good call. It depends on the restaurant, but, okay. but generally for sanitary reasons, uh, probably uh -huh. a good call. And then, but park was the number one answer. Uh, I feel like <laughs> I don't know why people would not want dogs at a park. But. I don't know what park they're going to, but that does not sound like a fun park. <laughs> <laughs> no, and what are parks for? Yeah. <laughs> you need to sit quietly and read a book. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> all right, nicely done. Well, I think you got uh, all three there after a, a guess. So three for three, congratulations to you and Derby. Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, you win a free uh, pitch here. Anything that we can do to help you or uh, that you can do to help us that we should know about? Yeah, so like uh, basically Derby and I, we started our own little brand, derbycalifornia.com. We sell all these amazing hoodies. Uh, that are tie-dyed here in OB where you can match with you and your dog. And we sell these awesome t-shirts and bandanas for the summer look. We're all about the matchy-matchy. So check it out. Also, any all uh, for every uh, thing that's sold on our, pro our, our site, our online store, we donate a portion of that to our, our awesome group here in San Diego, the Helen Woodward Animal Center. You can check them out at animalcenter.org. They do an amazing uh, thing here in San Diego. They actually put on one of the surf competitions that we attend every year. And that's where we got to know them and that are all what they're all about. <laughs> that is so awesome. Again, the website, derbycalifornia.com. Also, same thing, Derby California on Instagram. Uh, a great follow there. Check out Kentucky and Derby on The Pack on Amazon and Pet Stars on Netflix as well. Uh, thank you again so much for, for joining us. I hope you had fun. Until next time, uh, if you can't be good, be good at it. That's what I always say. Uh, you you can subscribe to this podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. Five-star reviews. All those are great things that help the show. Uh, I'd love to hear any suggestions for future guests, ways that you play for a living, or uh, hear about anything you're doing to have fun during the pandemic. So, don't forget, check us out, playfulhumans.com. I'm the I'm your host, Mike Montague. Until next time, go play. Don't wait for tomorrow. Live for today. Keep on chasing the sunshine. And go out and play. <laughs> go play, Derby. There you go. Nice. Nice ending. Thanks, Kentucky. Yeah, man. So yeah, you have this on YouTube?